Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be doing a bit of a follow-up video to one I made um, a good few weeks ago, probably getting on for about a month ago now, where I did my top 10 album openers. So I said in that video that I would at some point look at my top 10 album closers. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, however, I must say I did actually find this, um, like coming up with this list, a lot more difficult than I did for my 10 album openers. Um, I, I guess in some ways that's due to the fact that with my like the album openers, I guess well, I guess I was maybe like a bit more strict in terms of what I considered a, a good opener. Like there, I said that the opener shouldn't uh, um, sh shouldn't overshadow the rest of the album. Um, like um, that was like with a closer, that's not so much like of an issue. Like in many ways, you want the album to end like with a bang sort of thing, like with like a really um, like really great song and a song like that. It doesn't necessarily matter if it if it happens to be the best um like on the album for me um what for me what makes a good closer is is it is it kind of keeps you listening to the album and sort of like you really uh, um really like anticipate um like the closer um like coming up and like generally as well leaves you leaves you like with a really good impression like of the album you think uh, yeah you think to yourself yeah i want to play that one again like at some point so um so yeah i actually ended up really struggling to cut this down to 10 so so I'm, so I'm doing a top 15 instead. Um, so without further ado, we'll just get started with um, yeah, number 15. Oh yeah. Which I'm giving to American Girl, which is the closing track on Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers um, debut album. For me, this song is just such a payoff, like with like this album. Like, I mean, I'm not saying this is a bad album. It it it, it, it is a great record. It's just it's just not quite as good uh, good or as I guess well accomplished as some of Tom Petty's later work. But there's still some great tracks splattered throughout the album. But it's really that closer, which is the standout track. And I guess it kind of yeah, like kind of like the fact it kind of follows two slightly slower songs like Mystery Man and Luna which are just a little bit um, on like the kind of slower weaker side this song just kind of like that chiming Rickenbacker and what kicks it off it's just it really pricks up the ears and think yeah this is what it's all about really um, and yeah I guess it is the song which would kind of come to I don't want to say define Tom Petty's career but it's the track which is always I think he I think I think that he would always close his close his concerts with this song and it's kind of always the first track with any kind of Tom Petty Completion. It is his kind of breakthrough song, like in like many ways, um, and I think it just does such a good job of closing this album with that awesome kind of soloing between Petty and um, Mike Campbell, like um, Campbell, like on like kind of like the fade out. So yeah, a great great song, and yeah, a brilliant closer comes in at number fifteen for me. Next up is a Talking Heads album, which I'm going for um, Little Creatures, and the song is um, Road to Nowhere. Um, so this is just a great song, I think, yeah, again, to close off the album. It is the best song, like, on the record, so I think it is a, it is a bit similar to that Tom Petty one. The album itself isn't the Talking Heads' finest work. There's a couple of patchy tracks, like, in, like, the middle, but, again, this song is just such a payoff, like, for, like, the album. Um, um, like, again, like, you've got this really great build-up, like, this rolling chorus and, like, that whole, like, like, kind of, kind of like, it just it just puts you in a great mood this song I think and like again really really leaves you I guess with a favourable opinion like of the album like as a whole like when like when like an actual fact like if I maybe finished with a slightly lesser song and um, it probably wouldn't and um, I probably wouldn't think of this album quite quite as favourably but no it is a great close of this road to nowhere um, and yeah it's just such a fun song so yeah for me um, number fourteen. When the angels take Okay, next up, number 13, I'm going for um, When the Angels, which is the closing track from Prefab Sprout's album Steve McQueen. Now, this is one of the, I don't want to say one of the only upbeat songs, but it's certainly one of the most upbeat, um, like, on, um, like, on, like, the album. It's just got a great kind of feel to it, um, and it kind of, um, like, yeah, like, great production, like, as does the whole album, um, like, but it's just got a kind of feeling like that, like, um, I feel like with, like, resolution, like, in, like, some ways, like, as well, but again, 
again, it kind of it 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 is certainly as I said, like one of the more fun songs like on the album, like with like that really um, like kind of like that like great chorus, a great vocal flight like, from like Paddy McAloon, and and just an all round a great closer, which for me makes me want to play this album. And um, like again, like to be honest with you, like I mean, like there's a couple of slightly lesser tracks like what come before it. Again, things like Desire As and Blueberry Pies are for me the two weak songs like on this album or weaker songs like on this album. But that when but yeah when like when the angels comes on it just it just kind of um like yeah like blows those two songs like out of the water and for me just finishes the album and um, like on a bang so yeah that's number 13 prefab sprout Okay, that's not for me at number 12. It's maybe not quite as well um, revered as, as those previous songs, but for me, it is a song by uh, um, one of my favourite bands I got like the minute. It is um, The Lilac Time, and it's the closer to the album Paradise Circus called um, Work for the Weekend. Now, I must say, I, I, I actually like, just like when, when like, we're just filming that there, looked at the back, and it actually turns out this isn't actually the closer, so I guess maybe I'm slightly cheating here, but it's followed by a song called um, Twilight Beer Hall, which I have just looked up and that's 38 seconds so and i don't remember what that one goes like at all for me for me this album finishes with work for the weekend which is a just it's just a pleasant close of this again there's a sense of resolution with this song very much about a guy kind of um like sort of like worrying about his kind of financial situation sort of say saying like now i'll have to work for the weekend kind of thing like so like work on during the week to like enjoy and um, like the weekend and just with and it's just got this kind of feeling like of like life continuing kind of like the sort of kind of like kind of like the daily grind sort of like um that's sort of like um cycling on like in like many ways um and it's just a really pleasant song in terms of its production great harmony vocals throughout it and yeah it's it is a brilliant track which i i guess um isn't technically a closer and maybe is one which i have literally only just realized realized like the now that it isn't actually um like the proper closer here so i would maybe exchange it for something else if i was being strict but no it's definitely worth a mention as a yeah a really strong um, album closer for me because I guess it, de it I guess it technically is so yeah that's a uh, work for the weekend by the lilac time oh, Next up is uh, by New Order. It's um, from the Low Life album, and it's a uh, Face Up, which has always been one of my favourite New Order songs. This is a great closing track in the sense that there's a lot of build up to it, you know, and like there's a lot of different, I, I don't say parts to this song, but it kind of it develops like as it goes on. You've got a really great like introduction, but then the kind of song goes in a different direction by the time you get to like the first verse. You get um, like some great sequence of work like on here, and it's just it's a very anthemic song for me, a song which I've always just really enjoy. Um, lyrically, I guess it's about the kind of like the ending, like off like a relationship um, and like that. And I just love the way that Sumner's singing like that. Oh, how I cannot bear the thought of you, bit. Just he just sings it really well and like with a lot of power, um, like and passion, um, like for me. And then there's uh, and there and. And then I like the way it kind of builds up as well. Like, kind of like on my on like the last chorus, so you've got some guitar work going on, which is a kind of new addition, like a new layer, like added like to like the song. So I think it's just really well put together. Um, and yeah, for me, is um, yeah always been one of my favourite New Order songs. So that one will come in at number eleven. This is okay, next up at number 10 is The Water Boys, and um, this is the scene, the, um, like the album closer from the album of the same title. And this is one of my more recent album reviews which I've done, and I just echo basically what I said like, in like, that video. I think this is a breathtaking closer from the sh beautiful shimmering guitars. You've got some kind of sea sound effects on it, like as well, and just a very powerful vocal and kind of lyrical message like, from Mike Scott about kind of, I guess, looking forward uh, into the future, like with confidence. And I, that like, brilliant line, like this, and, and, and like, like about that brilliant line, that was the river, this is the sea. Just, just, well, just a brilliant song. Again, it's about six minutes, so it does go on a bit, but I think it really fits. The, fits like fits like its role like as an album closer and again a song which for me really leaves me with a very favorable opinion and um, like off the album so yeah and this is the scene we'll come in at number 10. <laughs> Uh, number nine is a really moving song. It's uh, Talk Talks, um, Time It's Time. And yeah, this is just a really breathtaking song for me. Very well produced, um, so many layers to it. 
and it's just got a very moving moving is it's a very moving song this for me in terms of it's kind of like that kind of like that choir what's kind of going on on it it just feels very is it is a very intense song and then you've got kind of some light relief as well like i and they kind of like towards like the end where some like the chorus come in gives it a slightly lighter feel and it just ends the album so well with that kind of like that long kind of gradual kind of fade out i think i think just works incredibly well so yeah for me and um, time it's time and um, by talk talk will come in at number nine like a stone Okay, so at number eight, I'm going for um, Kate Bush and um, The Morning Fog, which is the closing track on her classic album, um, The Hounds of Love. Now, this song actually comes at the end, like, off, like, the second side. Well, of course, it comes at the end of the second side. It's the closer. But it comes out, like, the it comes at the end of, like, this kind of suite of songs called, like, The Ninth Wave. Essentially about a kind of woman who's kind of lost at sea and like that, and like, kind of like that, kind of like that journey that she goes on. Um, that sort of, like, um, that sort of, like, well, um, like, stranded in that and this song um, I think just has such a sense of resolution to it it's kind of the end of the journey kind of thing like kind of like a nightmare's over like in like some ways and it's just got this kind of yeah this feeling of I guess in some ways waking up which I suppose in some ways you don't really want like from a closer like you know it kind of like um, like like and you think in terms of its mood it should be the opener but it works so well like at the end of this app like in the sense of just kind of resolving things um, like as I said um, and you You've got it's just a really beautiful production again in terms of like the backing vocals are really strong and there's beautiful fretless bass playing as well i must say i can't remember for, for the life of me like who um, plays bass on this album but it's just a beautiful bass part which just like augments the song really nicely and um, i guess me a really strong closer so yeah the morning fog um, will come in at number eight is another song I've mentioned like, on my channel fairly, fairly recently. Again, I feel like with a lot of these, well, well I guess well, guess with some of these, I can kind of recycle it in some ways the songs like that I'm talking about. But this is one, um, well, I'll show it first. It was um, XTC and The Wheel and, and The Maypole. Now, this is one which I'd chosen when I did my top 10 Andy Partridge songs with James Griffiths um, a couple of, again, I think this was getting on for like, a few months ago now. Um, and again, I'll just echo, echo like, what I said again in like, that video. I think this is an awesome closer to not only this album was star, but their career like as a whole really you know like, this was the, this is the last XTC song and you know I think it is just it, 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 it is like the perfect closer to like their career the song really concerns like the cycle of life through through essentially like two metaphors like one of like this kind of wheel going round and round sort of thing and then the other like kind of like a group sort of dancing dancing around like dancing around like a maypole and the song just has a lot of energy to it you've got a very kind of crunching like electric guitar riff on there and then there's very much this kind of um i guess it's a bit of like a frankenstein like of like two songs like i've like, put together and um, like on like actually i think like i've like recently picked up like the demos and um, like for this album i think it was actually like three or four songs like you kind of melded together to create this absolute masterpiece and um yeah it's a song like i can't get enough of and again like a few of the other ones I've mentioned, there's a few slightly weaker tracks like what have come before it, things like Church of Women and Wounded Horse, but then this song just leaves you with such a great, um, a great kind of, um, like opinion like off the album that you kind of come away from this thinking, wow, this is one of XTC's best albums, but then you kind of revisit some of like the other tracks and think, okay, on, on balance, it maybe comes in mid, um, like mid table, but just from that closer, I think it's, it is a stunning, stunning closer there. So that one, yeah, we'll come in at number seven for me. Okay, so is the closer to probably now one of my favourite albums of all time. If someone, if someone was to say top five albums, I think this album would be in it. And this, and it closes, yeah, like the last side of again what I think is one of the best sides of music. So it's um, yeah, Bay Rainbow by the House of Love, and the song is in um, your eyes. And this is just again, it's not my favourite track on Bay Rainbow. Like I like, like that would probably go to Feel or the Girl with the Loneliest Eyes. 
but it's just such a brilliant closer in the sense of it kind of it's quite a slow song this it's quite a i don't say like a meandering track but it kind of it's got a very kind of hypnotic guitar riff guy chadwick sings it very softly in this kind of very kind of dreamy kind of vocal but then i think it's that contrast between those verses and then the chorus part which just really like explodes again like energy and like i think um, like yeah like again again is that contrast like they work really well together and you've got an awesome guitar solo like in there like as well and, and i think it just gives the track real impact like again, like again like that contrast between like the sections and um, like again just makes out like, the chorus so much more in um, so much more like impactful so yeah for me your eyes and um, will come in at number six it's a awesome closer to yeah easily one of my um, all-time favorite albums now Next up, I had to have a McCartney song in here somewhere, and the one I've gone for is a 1985 from um, Band on the Run. Now, this is, I guess, what you would kind of would fall into the category of kind of grandiose kind of closer, you know, a song which I guess is easy to, I guess, make the case for it overshadowing the rest of the album, like in like some ways, even though, I mean, or, uh, even though I've gone here, like, I mean, you have got Band on the Run, like, and Jet, like, I kind of, like, as, as, as like, the first couple, like, off tracks, but this song, I would say, is just as good as those two. It's essentially like a piano stomper, this one here, with a great piano riff, really catchy, and an awesome vocal like from McCartney, and then just this, it kind of ends with this kind of orchestration, a very much a kind of, yeah, like sort of like extended outro like on like this one. And again, I like the way it kind of um, resolves back into like the chorus like of like Band on the Run. I guess it's a bit corny, but it works for me, you know, and, and I think it kind of um, like sort of like closes the album like really well. But just as a song, I think it's very difficult to see like what could have possibly followed this like on like Band on the Run. So that's why it makes a great closer for me. So 1985 would come in at number five. Judy, you're just trying to find and keep the dream of horses. Okay, let's look at number four. I'm going for a uh, Bell and Sebastian and a uh, Judy and the Dream of Horses. Um, this is just a great closer. It's a really fun song, this, you know, for me. And again, I like how it builds and develops, I guess, like the song goes on. Like, that's a kind of another theme for me, like in like with like a lot of like these tracks like they kind of develop like as like they go on or like they've got kind of different sections to them but this one's definitely kind of fits into that you've got the very kind of quiet um, introduction very much just Stuart Murdoch and like his acoustic guitar then you, then you get these recorders layered on top and then kind of um, halfway through the drums kick in you get this very um, kind of catchy like infectious horn riff on there and it just again has a kind of sense of resolution it's kind of got a kind of dream sense and um, dream like feeling to it um, and it's just a really great closer for me which again like it's a track which I um, think is a definite standout on the album here if you're feeling sinister so for me uh, that one will come in at number four So number three is another example of a really upbeat closer. So it's um, the Style Council's um, Walls Come Tumbling Down, the closing track from Our Favourite Shop. And this song, just for me, I think I'm choosing it because it is, I think it is the best song like on this album. Um, and it just wraps up the whole album so well in the sense of, I think this, I think of this as very much a concept album, sort of about kind of mid 80s Britain, you know, like under kind of, under kind of like Margaret Thatcher and kind of like the struggles like off like that kind of period. And I guess this song is just acts as such a kind of rallying call, like a like call to action sort of thing. Um, and it's just, again, there's a lot of energy to it. It is easily one of Stan Council's best songs. And I think just it's just this sense of it, yeah, resolving the album and kind of summarising almost everything that what's kind of come before it. Like, you know, like, it just, like, you just need this song, it, song, like, in some ways to make the point like that, like, the whole album, like, is making. But it's just the way that all the songs kind of come together, like, in this show. All, like, all, like, all, like the themes expressed throughout some of the other songs kind of come together in this kind of, yeah, this call to action sort of thing. So I think a really great track, um, and, um, yeah, for me, um, would be my third favourite. Okay, now at number two, um, I'm going for Stone Roses and I Am The Resurrection. So this song is 
just a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant track. Again, it's another sort of one of these tracks which kind of has this kind of, they go they go for this kind of like an extended outro and kind of the way it kind of builds. So it starts with this very solid drum beat, then you get Manny's bass part and then Ian Brown's vocal and then and then John Squire's guitar comes in. And again, it just, I, I, I always just, for me, with this um, song, just come away really impressed, I think, at the Stone Roses musicianship, particularly like John Squire's like on this track. But also, I guess, Reddy and, like, Manny, like, also pulling their weight um, really well, like, on, like, this track. And, like, I always think, blimey, this, is, this again, has to be one of the best albums, um, like, off, like, all time. Um, again, it's got this extended coda, but I think it really works, you know. I think it kind of it kind of builds, and his solo is just so intricately done. And, yeah, it is a real showcase for, like, the musicianship, like, in, like, the Stone Roses for me. So, um, yeah, I Am The Resurrection um, would be my second favourite album closer. Okay, so we've now arrived at number one. Now, this for me, I must confess, was a bit of a toss up, you know. Like, again, I, again with this video, like you know, is I've only gone really for one song per artist, um, and this was very much a toss up uh, for me between A uh, Day in the Life and Tomorrow Never Knows. And I went for Tomorrow Never Knows, like, in the end. I think because it's such a forward thinking song, you know, it's a song which is very innovative in the sense that it sets a lot of different musical templates. You wouldn't have had sound playing if you didn't have this song you wouldn't have had kind of dance loops and all that kind of stuff like if you didn't have this song so it's a song which yeah set a lot of musical templates and it's not dated at all you know i think i think it's a song which still sounds very fresh it's you can hear it um so like 100 times and still find new things kind of buried in like the mix it's just a really has a lot of replay value which for me a day in the life is brilliant and again it again it excels at this grandiose closer with all like this kind of orchestra freak out like and freak out like on like kind of like the final part of it but it's kind of after that song you think okay that's great but do i want to hit rewind and play it again maybe not quite but with this song it has a lot of replay value and i just think um it is probably a bit more timeless like than like like than like a day in the life like i would say um so but no a great closer here tomorrow never knows would be my favorite Okay, so that's me gone through there by top 15 um, album closers. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. I would be interested to know what some of your favourite album closers are in the comments below. And yet, yeah, I'll see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.